Um, I'm really delighted to be able to speak to you today about fatigue in MS. Um, it's a really important area to discuss because it's such a common symptom, as Dr. Chatterway said. <clears throat> Actually, it's the, one of the most common symptoms with about 92% of people with MS reporting fatigue. Not all the time, I have to say, but at some point across their journey with MS. Some people may have years with no fatigue and then little peaks of fatigue along the way. And other people tell us that it's almost a background to their, to their um, disease process. And actually, about two-thirds of people who do um, experience fatigue say it's about one of their top three troubling, most troubling symptoms. So when people have it, it's really significant. It interferes with everyday life, and it's one of the most common reasons why people consider giving up work. So it's something for us all to be thinking about, both people living with MS their families, and also professionals working with people with MS. When we want to ask what fatigue is in MS, the most important thing we can do is ask you, the people who have MS, because it's a subjective symptom. We can't actually physically measure it by any kind of test. We can't put an electrode on and decide that you have a 3.2 magnitude of fatigue, etc. But actually, people tell us what their fatigue levels are, and they can rate it themselves and, and give us an indication of how troublesome it is. So when we want to know about it, we really need to ask the experts, and that's people with MS. And here's a quote from um, a booklet that you may be able to get your hands on today, Living with Fatigue, which the MS Trust publishes. But here this person says, Fatigue leaves me feeling dulled and tired, and I find it hard to concentrate and absorb new ideas. And I'm often confused, searching for the right word and forgetting things. My memory deteriorates dramatically when I get very tired. And that's a really nice example of how fatigue might affect people with MS at a cognitive level or a thinking skills level. We also have people who tell us that it affects them very physically as well. And sometimes there's a combination of the two. Both physical and the thinking skills can be affected. So here the person says, I find the biggest problem about fatigue is that others don't understand. I think it would be easier for people to understand if you were wearing a plaster cast. And that's one of the things I hear all the time as an OT working with people with MS. It's an invisible symptom. It can't be seen. People feel terrible, but they're often told, oh, gee, you look good today, which makes the feeling even worse. And here somebody says, the, fati the fatigue feels as if I had worked sorry, walked a mile without food and almost no water. I'm not able to stand for long periods of time and playing with my children is hard. I have no stamina. And I'm sure many of you will relate to that if you have had MS fatigue. So what do the uh, professionals say? Well, the professionals define fatigue as an overwhelming sensation of tiredness, a lack of energy um, or feeling of exhaustion, and it may exist independently of both depressed mood and weakness. So that's an important thing to remember. Sometimes the two things go in hand, um, mood, low mood and weakness, sometimes go in hand with fatigue. And it's hard to know sometimes whether the fatigue is causing the low mood or vice versa. It's a bit chicken and egg, what comes first. But it can occur, occur completely independently of those factors. And then um, the MS Council, the United States um, Working Group in 1998, which is quite a long time ago now, but they came up with this definition. It's a subjective lack of physical and or mental energy that is perceived by the individual or caregiver to interfere with usual and desired activity. And the real emphasis here is on both physical and um, mental fatigue, but also the impact on everyday activities, which is really significant. So when we want to think about what causes fatigue, it's a little bit um, tricky for me to answer that question, so I might do a disclaimer now. We don't really know what causes fatigue. Um, it's a little bit like MS. It's a little bit mysterious. Um, however, we do have some theories, but we have lots of precipitating factors and perpetuating factors, things that may lead to fatigue developing and also help may make it continue. And this diagram, I hope you can see it, helps to clarify some of that. But there's multiple factors. And in, in the end, fatigue becomes almost an, a unique experience. It's almost like a, a fingerprint for each individual. 
everybody's fatigue is slightly different. But if you have a look at the diagram at the top, there are factors that are specifically related to the condition, which I'll talk a little bit about in a moment, the primary um, MS fatigue, and then factors that will make it worse if you do have MS fatigue, secondary factors. There's also the environment, so thinking about getting here today, you may have found yourselves exhausted just using the tube system, or you might have opted to use a taxi. And that can sometimes, the, the physical environment can cause fatigue. There's the psychological health. So if we're depressed or anxious or stressed, we will feel more, more fatigued. And that will affect the population of people with MS and those without MS. There's normal fatigue. So there's, we've been up too late um, and the next day we feel tired. That can also influence MS fatigue, although it isn't the cause of it. Sleep disorders, so if people can also have other conditions when they have MS, and that's important to remember. So if you do have a different sleep disorder, it's important to see your GP. And then finally, physical health. There can be comorbid conditions, other conditions that can cause fatigue, such as diabetes and colds and flus. Um, and also we can cause fatigue um, in the medical profession because a lot of the side effects of the common drugs that we use to treat um, MS symptoms such as spasticity and pain also cause fatigue. But there are three types of primary fatigue that I just wanted to really quickly touch on. We've got short circuiting or nerve fibre fatigue and this is often told to us, people describe it as when you walk one block you, or you walk the first 100 metres you might feel okay the second 100 metres, you might be developing a limp or really feeling heaviness in the leg. And by the third 100 metres, actually, you really need to sit down and rest. And then after a short rest, things improve. And that we, th we call nerve fibre fatigue or conduction block. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. There's also lassitude or central fatigue. And this is where people actually, they wake up feeling fatigued. And actually, rest doesn't really seem to help we don't really understand this type of fatigue very well, but it is described to us. And quite commonly, and many of you will have experienced this, but heat sensitivity fatigue. It seems to be that the nerves in, in, in MS, the, the right temperature for their functioning is really important. And many, many years ago, one of the diagnostic tests for MS was to put people into a hot bath and then see how they functioned after that. Now, we don't do that anymore. But, if, <laughs> but for those of you that have ever experienced heat sensitivity fatigue, you'll know that after a hot bath or particularly hot weather and sometimes even a hot meal, you'll have a real sensation of fatigue and, and a difficulty of moving and thinking clearly. So here's the nerve. You'll have seen this a hundred times or more, I'm sure. And the nerve sends its message along the shaft of the nerve um, through a, a process of exchanging chemicals or neurotransmitters. And they'll pop along those little segments of the nerve. You'll see the myelin in brown there, the little fatty substance that we know is affected in MS. And the message will jump along between the gaps in the myelin. And there are normal gaps in myelin. That's completely normal. If we have a look at that during a relapse, you'll know that those myelin segments become inflamed. And that is depicted in the top picture here. And in the bottom one, we have some areas of myelin that's actually been damaged. And that will expose some more of that nerve. And that exposure of the nerve actually allows more transmitters to enter into the nerve. So here's the nerve <clears throat> in a little bit more detail. And if more transmitters get onto that nerve, you can have a conduction block, too much chemical. You try to send the next message along, and it won't travel along as well. Now here's a little um, video, I hope this is going to work, um, but here's a normal nerve. You can see at the bottom here, the nerve with the myelin nicely wrapped around it, and at the top you'll see a clock. Thank you. Um, so here we go, the, the unaffected nerve, the electrical message travelling along the nerve, the action potential, and here it hits the end of the nerve, and you can see the clock's just done one little lap, so it's taken less than a second. Now the next picture, the next diagram, is where we have conduction block. And you can see the myelin affected here at the end. Have a look at the effort and have a look at the clock. It's taking more time, but that action potential never really properly gets to the end of the nerves. The message ne really never gets across. And then the final picture, the final um, little segment of video, will show a nerve that actually, where there's been some repair, so there's an effect here in the middle, but there's been some repair. 
Have a look at the clock. It's taking a lot longer for this message to travel across the nerve. Also, look at the size of this action potential. Huge amounts of energy and effort are going into this and lots of extra time. And the message does get to the end of the nerve, but it takes a lot more time and a lot more energy. And I think that's a really important message for people to be hearing because fatigue is a real thing in MS. It's not the same as the normal population's fatigue. It's definitely to do with what's happening within the nervous system. And it needs to be treated with slightly different emphasis to fatigue in the non-MS population. So there are also other factors that cause fatigue or make MS fatigue worse. And these are them, so sleep disturbance, infection, exertion, and that's an important one to pick up on because we also want to tell people to exercise. We know that exercise is helpful for fatigue, but exertion can lead to fatigue as well, so there's a fine balance to be looked at. Medication and side effects can cause fatigue, low mood, and the environment, which we've talked about already. But what I wanted to make sure you go home with today is that there are a lot of treatments for fatigue, both drug and non-drug treatments. First of all, with the drugs, there's one drug really called amantadine, and this is a drug that was first used for treating flu. Um, it's, it's modestly effective. About a third of people that try it find benefit from it, so it's not going to work for everyone. But it's worth giving it a, a, a think about. It's taken orally. It's generally well um, tolerated. There are mild side effects, and it usually needs to be taken before about, usually in the morning and before 2 p.m. in the afternoon, because it can cause vivid dreams and insomnia, which will make fatigue worse, obviously, if we're not sleeping well. So if you're interested, speak to your neurologist or your GP, and they can talk to you about that further. The next area of treatment is exercise. This is really important, um, and you might need to balance this with rest before and after the exercise to get the most benefit from it. But actually, not all exercise is great for fatigue. Really high-resistant exercise is not great, and aerobic exercise alone, not great. But a combination of aerobic exercise and moderate um, resistance is really effective. So something like swimming and cycling can be really useful within this. Um, and also, we also know that yoga can be very effective. Um, and, and finally, vestibular rehabilitation. So this is a, a rehabilitation for people with a balance problem. Sometimes challenging the balance systems can, for those people, will, will also lead to improvement in their fatigue. If you're interested, you need to really speak to a physio, ask for a referral. And then finally, you've got psychological and edu um, education approaches, cognitive behavioural therapy, mindfulness and motivational interviewing can be effective. And um, it would be worth asking for a referral to a psychologist to look at these areas. And finally, fatigue management, which is an area I've been involved with in the last few years. Um, we do fatigue management groups either as individual sessions, one-to-one, -one, usually about three to four sessions, or in groups. And there's a nice group that the MS Society funded some research for that's now running across the country in different areas called FACETS, which can be quite helpful. And if you're interested, you could speak to, uh, ask for a referral to an occupational therapist, and any member of the team can, um, can refer you to that. The types of principles you might want to consider within fatigue management are rest and relaxation, because actually that will allow those chemicals to disperse and go back to normal so that the nerve can function again. Prioritization, make sure you're doing activities that are really important to you, not just the things you have to do. Sometimes what we find is people with MS cut out the really enjoyable parts of their lives and just focus on the absolute essentials. So think about that within your family, because that can lead to quite a dull life, actually. Um, I know it's important, but you need to balance it. Um, planning and adapting daily activities, organizing your workload across the week and day, posture and positioning can be important, and your diet, which I know we're going to talk about later today. And finally, appropriate exercise, um, and that's a really important thing. So there are all these treatments um, that are effective. They've all been demonstrated as effective within research. Um, we used to say many, many, many years ago, if people had MS, put your feet up and relax. What we're saying now is do something. Um, it's really important that you are engaged and there are effective treatments. 
Um, and the take-home points that I'd really like for you to all to take home as family um, members and people with MS is fatigue is a really common problem and it's part of the condition. It's not the same as fatigue in the non-MS population. It's unique to the individual and it needs to be treated with respect and fine-tuned in terms of solutions. But there are many effective treatments and I'm sure that there'd be one of those for you. So, so do something. Thank you. Thank you very much.